I like the gist of, 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 of Christianity, not the organized religion. When you say that the gist of Christianity, you're referring to the esoteric nature that is, yeah, that is inside like of a, it. That is kind of like of a Christian mysticism. Okay. I mean, I like, I like the way that sounds. How it comes off the tongue. This, the, the, it's a, there's magic to it. It's magical. Because you know, that's like when I um, dream. You know. You know, some people dream of sad things. Some people dream of violent things. See, I dream I am on a, a, a continuous adventure in the cosmos on different planets. You know, I'm a, a, a James T. Kirk kind of guy. You know what I'm talking about? But with, some, with the communication skills of uh, John Luke Picard. What was her name? Janeway. Captain Janeway. You know, why I like yeah. her is because, you know, she, cause, you, know she, you don't mess with Janeway. Well, well see, Janeway, Janeway is driven. She's curious. Driven. She's driven and she's very capable. Behaving very rationally. That's what you were trying to accomplish, wasn't it? Huh? Pumping up my dopamine levels to push me to the edge, keeping me awake for four days straight with the constant pain of your devices drilling into my skull. Well, this is the combination of your work and guess what? You're going to be right here to collect the final data. Um, so, yeah, you know, yeah. Only a Star Trek person will understand them, uh, you know, what you're saying. But see, like, in my dreams, I'm on this cosmic adventure. Mm -hmm. And I have a, um, in some dreams, I have a this superpower where a lot of dreams I have this superpower where I can look at something, like say this pen is sitting down on the edge of the table, but you're too far away to reach for it on your own. So you can will it in your mind. What is that, telekinesis? I think so. And, well, anyway, I look at it. I have the intention uh, that I wanted. I reach out for it, and it just flies into my hand. I have that power in my dreams because on in several dreams I have that power. But last night I dreamt that I had the power, like Sucky Stackhouse, in the True Blood or the Southern Gotham, Gotham, got the Southern Gothic Vampire series. Um, she could uh, read people's minds, and so I had this ability. So. They had to look at me, and I held them kind of like a you know like a Vulcan mind meld. Uh, I had to hold them, and then I could hear a voice, hear their inner speak. You could hear their sub vocal conversations. Yeah, the the mind chatter, the yeah. stream of consciousness, like you know yes, when you're counting money. When you count money, like a bunch of ones, and the person is just counting it, but you don't see them counting on their lips, you don't hear nothing. And I'm like, so what's going on? They're counting in their head, guys. Okay. <laughs> And when we, when we talk about dreams, right, we often hear people talk about in their dreams how uh, they, they, some people are very aware of their dreams, some people are not. Some people have control over their dreams, some people don't. Uh, my particular area of interest, like when I have dreams, I see, like, like there was an artist named Salvador Dali, and he did like experimental work and when I was in film school, I studied experimental films and stuff. So many of my dreams are like, they're, they're experimental, like an experimental film. I, like sometimes the f I see faces on the walls, right? Uh, sometimes the floor drops from, from my feet and I fall, right? S sometimes I'm falling from the sky and right before I hit the ground, I wake up. My journey started on my computer. I cranked up the old thing and got to work. I first wanted to get an outline of how to approach my journey into dreams, how to structure what I wanted to know. So I put everything that I knew from my mind about dreams into my common book. As a human being that dreams, I should know a lot about dreams, many things. I jotted down everything I knew off the top of my head. 
those 20 pages of writing cause questions to arise. Well, why do we dream? During my exploration of the dream world, I came upon a classic book in the bookstore by Neville Goddard called Feeling is the Secret. Chapter two stood out to me. It's called Sleep. And it proposes how the realm between falling asleep and waking up is an important aspect of the inner creative process of creating your own reality. Now, what does God say about the realm between falling asleep and waking up? It is in sleep and in prayer, a state akin to sleep, that man enters the subconscious to make his impressions and receive his instructions. In these states, the conscious and subconscious are creatively joined. The male and female become one flesh. Sleep is the time when the male or a conscious mind turns from the world of sense to seek its lover or subconscious self. The subconscious has no desire to change the conscious waking state, but loves it as it is and faithfully reproduces its likeness in the outer world of form. The conditions and events of your life are your children formed from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep. They are made in the image and likeness of your innermost feeling that they may reveal you to yourself. As in heaven, so on earth. As in the subconscious, so on earth. Whatever you have in consciousness as you go to sleep is the measure of your expression in the waking two-thirds of your life on earth. Nothing stops you from realizing your objective save your failure to feel that you are already that which you wish to be or that you are already in possession of the thing sought. Your subconscious gives form to your desires only when you feel your wish fulfilled. So in my reading of the book, Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard, I get the profound sense that the foundation of dreaming is the subconscious. The subconscious is heavily involved in um, when people dream, when we enter the dreamscape. So a question that I, that I have is, how does Neville Goddard in his book, Feeling is the Secret, how does that relate to dreams? What's the larger picture here? In Neville Goddard's lecture from November 6, 1959, Goddard speaks on the value of dreams. Here he used the words God or Christ or imagination interchangeably. They mean the same thing. If I use the word God because I am moved to use it, or the word Christ, it is the same thing. It is the fundamental power that created and sustains the universe and which also sustains our environment. We are told there is a secret to the whole creation. In, In the, the beginning, beginning was, was the, the Word, word. And, and the, the word, word was with God, God. And, and the, the word, word was God. God. And by him were all things made, and without him 
was not anything made that was made. We could use the word imagination, but the secret here is word. What is the word? Something was made that was made. You have been taught to believe many things about the word. For no one familiar with the scripture could fail to see that the word is the dream of man. You have been taught it is some being born in a miraculous way without the offices of a man. Well, it is in a way. I have a dream and it comes out of nowhere. It depends on no outside help. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a dream. So the voice of God is the dream of man. Blessed is she, for she believed that this spoken to her would be fulfilled. It was told to her in a dream. From the beginning to the end of the Bible, God is always speaking through a dream. In Job, he speaks of two types. The first is a dream and then a vision of the night. And there he will open the ears of men and frighten them with warnings. I do not have to fall asleep here to dream. The nightmare is the rearrangement of the daydreams. They are rearranged dramatically and presented to me. And if my purpose is faulty, it terrifies me with a warning. So today we have our special guest is Ahmad. Hi, you guys. I'm Ahmad, also known as the Androgenic. So I want to know what type of dreams all of you have. With me, I I, I have all different types of dreams. I have lucid dreams. Okay. Um, for those who are out there don't know, those dreams are dreams that um, when you are aware that you're dreaming and you're able to control your dreams. Um, I also have dream about, you know, my past. So my dream is basically almost like me living another life or living in and the do, past. Do you think that your dreams sometimes influence your, your creativity, your performances? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. I don't think it has no influence in this in this life. Um, I feel like at times I'm living another life in another dimension. Interesting. As 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 another person, right? Or your other half. The same person. Okay. The same person. Um, now, when I'm having a lucid dream, when I'm awake and aware, then I can control and be whoever I want to be. So you're a magician in your dreams? Only when I realize I have the power. <laughs> That's funny the way it, it, it happens. Um, when I realized that, you know, none of this is real and um, you can't harm me, um, uh, my dreams do change. And I can probably count on one hand about how many times I was able to do that because I'm so embedded in what's happening in my dream, the situation or um, what's ever going on. So I'm not awake. I don't know if it's a dream or if it's not, it's been times where I've had a dream within a dream where um, I thought I was awake, but no, I was still in the dream. <laughs>